Spytron just took down Kong's brand new post Rage of the Abyss tournament, and we have quite an interesting breakdown for you at that. Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. Now, Kong's cards, remember discount code MCO40 will save you on your purchase over here. They just had post Rage of the Abyss, post Banless, all this little fun stuff that you're expecting to see for this brand new meta. Your top 16 here. We had five Snake Eyes duels. Yeah, so much for this deck being the strongest menace in the room. We also had three Tempai Dragons. So Tempai has this extremely strong meta uh, acceptance right now with Dominus Impulse, the Hand Traps. It's personally pretty crazy. We also have two Ubel decks in Top Cut. Huh, Ubel Domination win? We also have Branded, Runic, Drytron, Mermail, Infernoid, and a bestial, basically, control deck using the Metal Morph cards to kind of give this deck quite an interesting little edge over the competition, which I think is actually really, really cool. But that's just your top 16. So we shift on into top 8 here. You see a little bit different of a story here. You lose a little bit of that fun aspect of this. You know, we're up to three Snake Eyes at this point. Unfortunately, you know, Snake Eyes at this point kind of having this extremely strong chance to be taking over the meta here. Yeah, or so players were saying. You do get the chance to see the Azamina stuff shine here. We also had three Tempai versions in this top cut. I personally think Tempai is an extremely scary deck, especially for the things that this deck can do now. Our Runic version also managed to find its way up here into the top cut, showcasing some of the cool ideas that you can kind of mess around with out here in the meta. And Power Sing Stone was one of those that this deck had the chance to see. And winning it all is actually this really cool Drytron deck that challenges a lot of what we initially thought that we knew about the meta out here, getting you the chance to end on some extremely cool boards. So that's actually very, very awesome. Let's pass on over to Decklist. Winning our event here is actually the power of Drytron. Dun, 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 dun. This card right here in combination with Lib were two of the biggest things that I saw this deck actually doing. Yes, being able to make Lib out here and basically powering through setting up this stupid good board with IP allowed, you know, Dad here to be this formidable force. I'm actually very, very impressed with what I got to see this deck kind of push through in a lot of this meta, and I think a lot of people definitely are going to underestimate this, me included out here. Now, second place, hmm, Deception with the Azamina combo. You know, getting the Silver and the Russellago out here so you can do your thing. Uh, of course, I was only playing one copy of OSS. I like the second copy so you can kind of fuel off you know, your extra little copy of this. 45 cards, though, but you do still see full Fiend Smith combo. No Lacrima in here, I mean, which is kind of interesting because, you know, you're still going to be kind of powering through this stuff. I do like the Lacrima as the stepping stone for this deck. It helps out so much. All right. We have uh, the Shifter Turbo here, actually building in the one Dora Dora. We are not actually playing any of the, dis you know, the Impulse card, which is kind of interesting. And we are actually playing a Sengen Kaiho down here as well. You know, being able to kind of set up through these extremely strong options to punish your opponent. You also have the Santa Claus for the defensive options. And our friend, the Kwaki Maradrago out here, still setting up so we can go first and laugh at our opponent. Excellent. All right. Hey, Malcharmy's back at it again. You do see the Azamina stuff in here with the Deception. This deck is so much more fragile and so much more hilarious now. You also do see that we are playing the Azarune in this for our dear old friend, the top hat hair, so we can kind of go ahead, set up the good board that we need to. What's interesting here is we're also playing the Azalea, the Dagda, and the Agave Dragon in here. Um, actually having all access to these, also for the lands he has, going to be very, very strong. Do not underestimate Dagda and getting the chance to shift on into this. Okay, top eight. Ah, the board breakers. All the dark holes, all the regekis. All the Malcharmies, we laugh all day long. We also have, ah, we're back on the heat waves out here. You know how many people have told me, yes, heat wave is a broken card. Yeah, the card's good, don't get me wrong. But as the meta's kind of been shifting around here, I don't know, It. Uh, if, I think a few people have forgotten about this. We'll have to see if this does stick on around here as something in the future. Woo, more snake eyes, so much snake eyes. Uh, the Deceptions with the Yasmina, good stuff still for this. Uh, still, um, no 
extra copies of what's called. We're just playing the Necro Equip into the Wave King Geyser here. So Bill just totally gutted the Desiree stuff, doesn't even give a crap about it. It, it. Yeah, play the one skill drain down here as well if you need to see it on the sack. 43 cards, and you're also playing the Tack Talents in here as well. I think all of your problems are pretty much solved with this. Like, this is pretty strong now. Uh, we also do have in here the power of Power Sink Stone. I'm surprised they're actually getting away playing the Power Sink Stone. And it's, but to me, fair. I mean, you're rolling through borders, and then, you know, the extremely strong, you know, dimensional fissures. Having this card as your floodgate. Just gonna feel so good. This card, at the end of the day, free vacuum, free handle things. As long as, you know, you're seeing everything else that you need to here, mission accomplished. One desires, A-OK -okay by me. Okay, I, I see you. Good stuff. Uh, we also have uh, the Raigeki volume in here. Now, this is what I was talking about. Now, this Bill's playing the Impulse in here. Yeah, you get locked out of light, earth, and wind, but, like, I don't think that really matters all that much, you know. Uh, of course, the Magna Hut in the side deck is kind of interesting. I don't necessarily like that, but, you know, we're trying some little spicier stuff, so I, I guess that's fine. You have some sort of excitement in your life out here for this. So that's your top eight. Ninth place, we're shifting back here into top 16. We do have our first U-Bell list here. You do see we are playing the little Crema in here. So this actually helps you get the dump. Uh, 50 cards, by the way. 50 with the Mature Chronicle and okay. We're also doing the Azarune in here so you can, you know, go through the turbo stuff. And I also see we are citing a Grass. I guess the Grass does actually come up because we are playing a larger deck size than normal. That's actually kind of cute, but you know what? Some cool ideas we can do. Okay. Ooh, branded. 52 big ones here. No grass, though, in this version of the deck. You see the mulch armies coming on in here, so you can kind of do the thing. Standard by steel inclusion in here for the 1-1. One, one. So you can at least beam on out, you know, branded lost. Congratulations. Are right, playing the one duplication built in the main deck here. Standard thrust with dark rulers as well. You know, one branded fusion, you slightly adjust the ratios. The deck is still here. I might have initially underestimated it, but I, I think it's doing pretty good. Ooh, we have more Snake Eyes, but this build went above and beyond what we're used to seeing out here. 60 big ones in this. In my opinion, it's kind of crazy to be seeing. We are also citing this uh, Silhouette Hat Rabbit with the Azurin to bring on in here. You do see we are playing the Fiendsmiths in Paradise in here as well. I mean, the cute little tech choices that you're getting seem pretty cute. Um, I'll take that, actually. Uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, okay. Cool. Ooh, we have Mermail. We're actually playing the Armored Shark in here. Of course, with the, uh, this is just it, like 3 1 1, and of course, one of the Virtue Stream, and then of course, you just build in the one Levature and the one copy of the Poseidon Abyss. Of course, it's in our new Link 3. The fact that this deck was able to make top 16, I think, is one of the coolest accomplishments out of this event. Like, there's so much cool stuff going on here. I need to learn my Mirror Mills. Minstrel Effect, Rip Hand Trap. Okay. We also had 60 card noids. Dun 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 dun. When grass looks greener, you're gonna, you know, want to try this deck out. And I agree. I was waiting for somebody to try noids. Just see what they could do. And, you know, you have left arm offerings now to get to it. You have, you know, triple tactics thrust. The downside of this, though, is if, you know, you get ashed on the left arm offering, yeah, it's going to be a bad time. You just need to make sure whatever you're milling gets you to where you need to be. Ah, we have more deception and fun here in the Snake Eyes. This build going up to 45. You do see we are playing the Scarlet Sorrow in here. Um, I am very surprised to see the amount of people that are still focusing so hard on the triple engraver. So many people in the OCG were shifting down to two of these, but, you know, TCG just wants to have as much money as they can have invested into this deck so that they can continue <laughs> to make this deck look good. Hey, look, floodgates, so that we can keep doing our thing. Okay. We also do have more Ubel. Yes. Double tracked in here. Running on the deck of 40 cards, by the way. That's kind of impressive. There's the Uriel Leader with the Necro Quip, of course. Pretty incredibly standard stuff. Um, I don't see anything too crazy in here. Like, you have to add, like, nothing in new in here. You're not even playing the new Lacrima for that consistency upgrade, which I is what I'd want to be doing. The only downside is the Lacrima is, in fact, a Brickaroo. Ah, our Bicesteel Control deck. So all of the Bicesteels in the world in here... 
with the splash metal copycat and the full metal dragon so you can roll it out and of course the little black dragon here being a full little combo so you can get through these boards and do your thing we're also playing the approaching machine as well so you know getting to the full metal stuff make sure deck all of this more consistent um, for you able to set up your inboard, which is actually pretty cool. Now we are going to go a little bit further here. We are going to go down to 17 through 24 here. So we do have more Ubel here. Uh, this build's playing 47 cards. We are packing in the Lacrima in here. You do see all the standard Ubel variations. We're doing Triple Dark Beckoning Beast to the one opening here, which is fine in terms of ratios. I don't really have any real big issues with that. You do see the Nightmare Thrones in here as well. But there's nothing really too crazy about this that you're changing. Most of your ratios have been pretty much set in stone with this deck. Um, if you're trying to mess with them, okay. Oh, we do have a memento sighting down here as well, which is really cool. Uh, this build's actually playing the Apophis. Uh, you do see we do get the chance to show off the Aki Huron. And we are doing full Fiendsmith combo in here. That's why your deck is like 47 cards. It's because you're shoving in all these extra engine pieces in here so that you can get to where you need to be. Now, we're also doing the Goblin Biker Imprisonment in here. Do not underestimate this card with the Goblin. All right, the fact that they have managed to speed up the process of what this deck was able to do is an absolute banger in my opinion. Okay, next up here, we have more Tenpai. Ah, six small Charmies built into this, my classical favorite. Uh, this is gonna be something that's gonna annoy a lot of people. We're also only playing one Genroku and one Fadra. That's wild. You still have the Dark Holes and the Raigekis for the full board breaks in here. But this build also is focusing on Fenrir's in here so, you know, you can have the deployment for the interruptions, you know, the control aspect of things. And, of course, hey, look, we have deck lockdowns down here as well. Next up here, we have Buster Blader by Steels. So take your take your flavor out here of which by Steel champion you want, you know. You kind of... Buster Blade locking your opponent out here I think is fine. We're also playing the Grand Tusk Dragon in here. I actually love this thing being able to be brought off of Yield Sphere mode and your opponent's kind of forced to look at this and go... Uh, what in the world is that? A minor inconvenience at that duelist. Also, double destructive Durimican with for the trap tricks. Okay. Ooh, we have Labyrinth. Kind of interesting to see a sighting of this. There's your triple transaction rollback doing the thing. We're actually playing a Keldo in here, and of course, we are back on the Unchained package. Unchained stuff's going to be pretty important now, I mean, considering the fact you have triple Lord of Yama in here. But, I mean, the thing is, you're playing the Pot of Extravagances because you need all of the draw power that you can possibly get in this deck. I can't really tell you that draw power is not good, but, yeah, you need it. All right, next up here. What in the world? Instant contact with draw hand and the elemental hero spirit of Neos. Just so we can get Aqua Neos on the field. It's a level seven, so we can uh, start doing some cheesy little rank seven plays. Yeah, so this is the spiciest cash tier deck I've ever seen. If you want to have something fun to play, and I, I do say that, play this. Your Fusion Destiny good stuff in here to make the DPE. Yeah, I've seen enough. All right, we also had Unchained back here, actually. Oh, no, this is like Lair Control. Okay, so you have the layers with the fun stuff here, tour guides, and you're just rolling through every sort of virus card that you can kind of throw at your opponent and force them into this bad position, which, you know what? I, I'm cool with that. Shifters, all of this, like, okay. This is the local buster special right here, all right? And then we also have more Tenpai for you. Hey, look, we were feeling spicy today. We were only playing two Dark Holes and the triple Ragek. You also have the two Thrust for the one Talons here, which is fine. And then, of course, standard Samurai Destroyer. We're also playing two Solemn Scoldings. I don't know how I feel about that. That's a little bit more uh, beyond my department of feels, I feel like. But that does open up the door to some interesting little things that you can do. But I'll take that. So what do you guys think about this breakdown? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.